have a look at the first question, and I hope you see these questions are clearly related to one another, right? Uh, one and two is a pair, three and four is a pair. I suppose in an exam and in the HSC, you'll often see these as 1A, part one, part two. Like, you know, in Roman numerals, that's how they often denote. These questions are a unity. We're actually trying to hold your hand through this and give you some clues. So the question is, what does one have to do with two? Any takers? You can give me an obvious answer if you like. This, I like obvious answers. What's the obvious thing that is in common between one and two? There, yeah, sure. The, um, the left hand side is the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. This guy here and this guy here, right? Coincidence? I think not. So the question is, how do you then, I mean, being that there's an order here, right? How do you use this to help you with this? Well, I want you to think back to when we're looking at inequalities, and I keep pressing you on this question. Whenever you see algebra, whenever you're manipulating symbols, think of a picture, which is why the first thing I asked you to do was draw a picture. What this is asking is half x minus 1. I can think of that as a straight line, right? In fact, I can just substitute this in. y is less than or equal to 1. Right, do, you, do you see that comes from here? Yeah, you okay with that? Now, y is about up and down. It's about up and down. It's this axis here, which I guess we could label. All right? That's fine. I didn't, I didn't ask you. No big deal. Okay. You have the important stuff. Now, therefore, if I read y is less than or equal to 1, what I'm asking is, okay, vertically, where is this graph less than 1? Vertically. Okay. Now, y equals 1 is not on my graph, so I'm going to put it there. If that's negative 1, I guess, according to scale, that would be 1. Right? So I'm looking for the parts of this graph that are beneath 1. Where are those parts of the graph? And the answer is, uh, it's all this stuff, right? See all of this stuff is beneath y equals 1. Do you agree? Yeah. Now, we know vertically where it is. But the question, of course, here is just to do x's, which is about left and right. Yeah. So therefore, you have a look at that value you got over here. And because you guys have you know, grid paper and that kind of thing, if yours is accurate, this should line up with 4. Yeah? I mean, you can even kind of intuit your way there by thinking, well, look, the gradient here means you go across 2, up 1. But that means you go across 2, up 1, right? Because gradient is consistent across a straight line. Naturally, uh, you don't have to appeal to a picture to do that. You can just do this just purely by algebra. What were your steps? Oh, times everything by 2. Yeah, so that would make this x minus 2 is less than or equal to 2. Yep. And then you can see it's just one line to Michael's answer. Okay, fantastic. Alternatively, you could have added one to both sides. Same operations, different order. Okay, and you can verify. Yeah, look, see, x is less than or equal to 4. It's that way. Do you agree? Because that's the part that I shaded. Okay. Now, you know that 1 and 2 are connected. You know that 3 and 4 are connected. Hopefully, you can see that the top pair and the bottom pair are also connected. You all probably have a graph of this. This is the easy part, right? Y equals x squared is uh, a nice simple parabola. It's just been taken from the origin and lifted up a unit. That's the effect that this plus one has, right? So I hope you've got something like this, okay? Now, let me back up a little bit. See how there's a one there, right? In order to know conclusively that this is the graph that you're talking about, right? I actually need to add what's called a point for scale. You need some coordinates on here. However, for this question, for this graph, I do not need a point for scale. Can anyone suggest to me why is it that this one needs one and this one does not? Any takers? What do you reckon, Declan? You think about this before? Yeah, enough Yeah, fantastic. So if you have a look at this one, right? Because you're going to helpfully put on two intercepts, right? That graph has to be that. There's nothing else it could possibly be that fits the information, okay? You've got two intercepts, bam. That's the only straight line that passes through both of those, okay? But this guy, as I've drawn him, actually could be a whole bunch of different parabolas. What else could be the equation of that parabola right now? Yeah, just any other gradient with the same intercept. Yeah, very good. Uh, I could pretty much put any positive number out the front here the plus one will still be there, and it would just change the scale of this thing, right? It would be fatter or it would be thinner. And you can't really tell them because you have no horizontal scale. So if you've drawn yours and it looks exactly like that, I'm going to encourage you to put on a point, make it easy for yourself. Pick an easy point, like say, 
one, two. You don't have to pick hard numbers, but you don't have any x-intercepts to go from, so therefore you've got to lift yourself up. Okay. Now I know conclusively that's that. Okay, last question. And here's where you probably looked at this and thought, really? Do we really have to draw that? The algebra is so simple. But down here, the graph is going to be super helpful. Watch. When you're doing your working, right, almost certainly, uh, is going that way, almost certainly your first line was that. Do you agree? Do most people do that? Well, that's fine. That's okay. Even if you didn't, okay. Where would you go from here? Now, do you remember when we did that lesson on equations and inequalities? And we noticed, well, in most cases, you can treat an inequality identically to an equation, right? Like all of these steps would have worked just fine if it were an equal sign, not an inequality. And then you get to this and you're like, uh-oh, because if you take square roots of both sides, you end up with that. What do you put on the right-hand side? You've at least got to have that because that's a square root. But we've trained ourselves from looking at equations to say this. Like, well, there's two values, right? But then you think, well, wait, wait a second, what, what on earth does that mean? Like you're greater than this one and this one? What is going on? We need to do this differently. We need to approach it differently. And the way we're going to do it is by coming back to our graph. Right? X squared plus 1, that's what it looks like. X squared plus 1 is greater than 4. What is this asking in terms of this? Do you remember how I did it? Yeah, so remember, I can rewrite this, if I, if I thought of that as y equals whatever, I can rewrite this as y is greater than 4. Well, y's are about vertical values, up and down. Where is y equals 4 on my graph? There's 1, there's 2. Do you have enough space on your coordinate axes? If I go 3 and 4, like that, just like I did up here with y equals 1, I can slot in y equals 4. Okay. Now what this is asking is, when are you vertically above 4? So which parts of the parabola am I interested in? Yeah, I guess the way you verbally describe it is it's like the bits above here on the outside and the bits over here. They're also on the outside. Right? Question. Do you shade that area? Okay, so at the moment, like see this question here? Solve this and graph it on a number line. So what I'm trying to do right now is get the first part. I'm trying to solve. I'm trying to get out of this another inequality that is the set of solutions for this. Okay? I'll come to the shading in a minute. Okay, let's come back. Do you remember, if this were an equation, you'd take the square root of both sides, right? And you would get this. And when it's an equation, we're fine with the plus minus, right? That's all good. My question to you is, what is the significance of this to this? Where are plus and minus root 3 on this diagram? Ah, well, it does say x equals, right? So these are horizontal values. I'll show you exactly where they are, and you should draw them on your diagram. Uh, new color. x equals root 3 is right there. Do you agree? Like think about it, just put it back into here, right? If x were root 3, then y would be root 3 squared, which is 3, plus 1, which is 4, right? So that's why the coordinates there are root 3, comma, 4. So far, so good. And in the same way, where's negative root 3? Over on the reflected side, right? So here, that's negative root 3. And again, you can supply it into the equation, you'll still get y equals 4. So, and this is why this is so useful, right? Graph it on a number line. You're looking for x values, the ones that work. We want it on the outside over here, to the right. You see that's how I capture this part of the graph? So I'm going to go from root 3, and I'm going to draw this way, okay? That is part of the solution on the number line. You try any value in here, go ahead, plug it in, and this inequality will be true. In the same way, over on the left-hand side, from here off to negative infinity, those are also part of the solution. Okay? So how do you state that in algebra? Uh, if I say this part over here, we'll go from left to right. Um, that first part there is x is 
less than negative root 3. Yeah? What about this right-hand side? X is greater than positive root 3. Okay. Now, remember I talked to you a little bit before about commas and words that go between things? <coughs> what word goes in here? Hmm. Now, I'm going to suggest the most helpful word is or. The most dangerous word is and. And comes in. It's important later on. Why can't I use the word and? Because I don't care how many numbers you know, there isn't a number that is simultaneously less than root, negative root 3 and also greater than root 3 at the same time. So we can't use and in this case. Okay? I'll talk about and in a second. I just want you to point, notice right now, you can't just go from here and then take the square root of both sides. It's not an equation. Remember I was trying to emphasize to you before, inequalities are different things. That's why if you've got this and you take reciprocals, it's not just like, oh, I did the same thing to both sides. You're not doing the same thing to both sides. And when you multiply by negatives and so on, inequalities are different objects. 